So coronaviruses are not new. I learned the name coronavirus years ago in medical school next to the name rhinovirus and both of them were under the heading viruses that cause a cold. What happened in 2019 is a new strain of coronavirus arose in China that was one extremely contagious but also much more dangerous than the other strains of coronavirus. It had the ability to cause a lot more damage than merely a cold. And this virus has spread the world over and brought the entire world to heal in a matter of weeks. So coronavirus infects the respiratory tract predominantly. And the respiratory tract means the entire length all the way from the nose down to the actual lung tissue. So it includes the nasal cavity here, the throat here, the voice box or larynx here, the trachea here, all of the airways inside the lung tissue, and then the actual alveolar lung tissue itself. All of this is included in the respiratory tract. Now, when we talk about a virus that has caused a cold, that means that the virus has only infected the upper portions of the respiratory tract. So a better name for a cold is an upper respiratory tract infection, or a URTI for short. So the parts of the respiratory tract that are considered the upper respiratory tract are the nasal cavity, the throat, and the voice box, the larynx. So when the virus infects the nasal cavity, we call that rhinitis. That causes a sore nose, a runny nose, potentially the loss of the sense of smell. When the throat is infected, we call that pharyngitis. That causes a sore throat. When the voice box or the larynx gets infected, we call that laryngitis, and that causes a hoarse voice and a cough. So most strains of coronavirus, this is all they're going to infect. The nasal cavity, the pharynx and the larynx causing an upper respiratory tract infection or a cold. And indeed, even this new form of coronavirus, COVID-19, in most people who catch this virus, this is all it's going to cause, an upper respiratory tract infection. The problem is that in some people who get this virus, it can go lower down and cause lower respiratory problems. So the larynx is considered the cutoff between the upper respiratory tract and then the more lower portions of the respiratory tract. So if the virus was to go lower into the trachea and cause an infection here, we call that tracheitis. Tracheitis is not too terrible. It causes a really bad cough, a barking cough that sounds like a seal. And if you've ever had a really bad viral infection, it may well have got down into your trachea and caused you to have a really barking cough. When it gets lower than the trachea, this is where things start to get dangerous. So if it gets into the actual airways within the lungs, we call that a lower respiratory tract infection or an LRTI for short. That can cause problems with breathing because lots of mucus will be secreted into the airways to try and deal with the viral infection. That can block up the airways and then that can cut off ventilation to certain areas of the lungs and cause problems with the functioning of the lungs. Then, even worse than that, if the infection actually gets into the tissue of the lung, the actual alveolar tissue, that is when we call it pneumonia. This is the problem with this new strain of coronavirus. The old forms of coronavirus that just caused a cold, they were nowhere near as dangerous. They didn't have the ability to get into the lower respiratory tract. The immune system would see them off when they were still just infections of the upper respiratory tract. This new form of coronavirus in some people is able to get into the lower portions of the respiratory tract and cause lower respiratory tract infections and maybe even pneumonia. And these infections are very, very dangerous. So the function of the lungs is in gas exchange. They uh, supply the blood with oxygen and they remove carbon dioxide from the blood. If the lungs become infected, either through lower respiratory tract infections or worse pneumonia, this can block them from performing their function properly. And then you can enter what we call respiratory failure, where the lungs aren't managing to do their job properly and the oxygen levels within your blood go down and the carbon dioxide levels potentially in your blood go up. Respiratory failure is dangerous because, of course, all the organs of the body rely on being supplied with oxygen and having the carbon dioxide taken away. So if this stops happening, if the gas levels within the blood become deranged enough, 
all of the organs of the body will start to misfunction and eventually the heart will stop beating because of the gas derangements and at that point uh, you will die. So respiratory failure is a cause of death. So coronavirus has hit my hospital, it has hit my wards, most of my patients now have coronavirus and most of them just have a cold. However, two of them have got more seriously ill from it. One of them got a lower respiratory tract infection from it and became very wheezy. She's doing okay and I hope we're going to get her through this. The other lady who got seriously ill from it got full-on coronavirus pneumonia. It infected the entirety of both of her lungs and all I could do was treat her for bacterial pneumonia which is all that we know how to do so all I could do was give her intravenous antibiotics which normally works for pneumonia because pneumonia is normally a bacterial infection it's usually an infection of the lungs by the commensals that line the throat so all of our throats are full of bacteria that live there peacefully all the time however in elderly people with weaker immune systems these bacteria can actually go down into the lungs and cause a bacterial infection and that is normally the cause of pneumonia streptococcal bacterial pneumonia and that responds phenomenally well to antibiotics that usually cures it so all I could do with this lady who had this horrific pneumonia was give her the normal treatment the intravenous antibiotics but of course this was a viral pneumonia and those antibiotics are going to do absolutely nothing and I'm afraid to say this lady didn't make it and did sadly die of respiratory failure from pneumonia to put more context into this story, I work in orthopaedics, so my patients come in with broken bones and the orthopaedic surgeons rebuild them and then I, as the junior doctor in orthopaedics, look after them along with the therapists after the operation until we are happy that they are well enough and the therapists are happy that they are mobile enough to go home. And what's lovely about orthopaedics is that the death rate is very low, my patients don't generally die. They come in with these broken bones and we rebuild them. It's, it's a very nice speciality to work in from that point of view. The only patients that generally die in orthopaedics are patients with advanced dementia who come in with injuries and then have orthopaedic surgery and the injury and the orthopaedic surgery together tip their cognition downwards further and they then you can lose the ability to actually even swallow food anymore. So it might have been that they came from a care home where they had to be fed with a spoon to keep them alive. And now that their cognition has deteriorated just that little bit more from the injury and from the surgery, you can put a spoon full of food in their mouth and they won't swallow it. They'll do nothing with it anymore. They've lost even that final ability. And those are the patients who die in orthopaedics and they die of course not because of the orthopaedic problem but because of the advanced dementia. This lady who died of coronavirus pneumonia she had reasonably good cognition. I admitted her in fact with a broken hip. The orthopaedic surgeons did their magic, they rebuilt her. She should not have died, she should have survived this admission and she would have survived this admission if she had not got this virus. So truly this virus is deadly.